Hi, this is Geometry, Chapter 4-5. We're going to discuss isosceles and equilateral triangles. <clears throat> We're going to cover all these uh, theorems and this, these two corollaries to theorems. First thing we need to do is identify all the terms that we're going to use to describe an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles are, you know, it's a triangle with two legs, two sides that are congruent. So this side is marked with one tick mark and this has got another tick mark. So these two sides are congruent, so we call those legs. Now the other side, the third side, we call base. I drew this base at the bottom and we're used to in life that the base of a glass, the, bla the base of a lamp, is always sitting like down on our desk and at the bottom. That's not necessarily true. So in this yellow triangle, see this leg is congruent to that leg, so therefore this opposing side, this third side, is the base. And this point that's in between the two legs, that's the vertex. In this blue triangle, this leg is congruent to that leg, so this point that's in between the two legs, that's the vertex, and across from the vertex is the base. Okay. Next thing we get to learn is that, uh, that we, you know, we already discussed the vertex angle up here between the two legs, but the other two angles are called the base angles. And well, they, one side is the base and the other side is a leg. This side is a base, the other side is a leg. And with our first theorem for the day, theorem 4-3, if you have two legs that are congruent, an isosceles triangle, then the sides, excuse me, the angles that are across from that leg and the other leg, those are the base angles and they are congruent. If you have this this leg here is congruent to that leg there, so then across these two base angles are congruent. Okay. So let's apply this stuff. So, well, if we have this side is congruent to that side, those are the legs, and then that means that this angle and this angle, these are base angles. So if this is 53 degrees, then Y has to be 53 degrees. And then the vertex angle, x, this angle here, um, x is going to be equal to 74 because 53 plus 53 is 106. Subtract that from 180, there's your 74. Okay, now this problem here, we have marks here and here, so these two legs are congruent, which means that these two base angles are congruent. Well, if this is 70 degrees, if we take 180, subtract the 70, we get 110 degrees. And you divide that by 2 because these two angles are congruent, the base angles, which means that both of these are 55 degrees. So then you can substitute 55 in for the measure of angle 2, set it equal to z plus 63, and you subtract the 63 from both sides, so z has to be negative 8. Okay. The converse of the isosceles triangle theorem is if you have two base angles that are congruent, follow them across like a flashlight shining, that then these two, as I said, these two angles are congruent, follow that across, and this side has to be congruent, follow that one across like a flashlight, that side has to be congruent. So if you have a triangle where two base angles are congruent, then the, the two opposing legs have to be congruent. All right, let's apply that. Well, if this angle and this base angle, if these two angles are congruent, then these two sides are congruent. So simply said, x is 6. If this base angle is congruent to that base angle, fall across, then 7 is congruent to y plus 9. So I already wrote out the math for you. So you set up y plus 9 is equal to 7, subtract the 19 from both sides, you get y is negative 12. Theorem 4-5. If a line bisects the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle, then the line is also perpendicular to the base. So this blue line, CD, a line segment, is bisecting this angle, this vertex angle here. We know it's the vertex angle because this leg and this leg are congruent. This is the vertex angle. So this rule is now saying 
that that angle by that angle bisector is perpendicular to the base. It's also a perpendicular bisector, but our book is not saying that. So, oh well. Let's keep going. Uh, let's apply this theorem. Well, look, if you're told that you have this leg is congruent to that leg, and this is this is an angle bisector, then that's a right angle. So therefore, that's 90 degrees. Boy, that was real easy. Let's keep going. The corollary to to um, theorem 4.3 is um, if we have an equilateral triangle, then it's an equilangular triangle. And then the corollary to 4.4 is the other way around. If you have an equilangular triangle, then it's an equilateral triangle. So let's apply this. We have, well, this is equal lateral, so y is going to be 13. But then that also tells us that it's also going to be equal angular. So then you know that x is 60. OK. Let's pull all this together and apply a previous lesson. Um, this exterior angle here and the 68 are a linear pair, so you subtract 68 from 180 and you get 112 degrees for that angle. See we have this congruent mark here and this congruent mark here, which means that this angle is congruent to that angle. X is 68. I guess I should fill in the W. Okay, and then well, this is the vertex angle. These are two remote interiors. So if you subtract that value of x from the 112, it'll give you the value for y, which is 44. And you can double check. If you add up the 44 and the 68 and another 68, you're going to get 180 degrees. And then here, since this is an equilateral triangle, then z is simply 60 degrees. And thank you for watching this lesson.